the MMA Roadshow, episode number 452. My name is John Morgan, coming to you live from Washington, D.C., home of the 2023 PFL World Championship, coming to you this Black Friday, November 24th. And joining me is Cole Coffey, all the way from back home in Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the, well, Maybe no longer home of the F1 race. You, 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 you finally got him out of your hair. That's right. F off, one. <laughs> F off. Well, I'm glad you're in our nation's capital where things happen. Things, uh, big things happen. I heard you're you're running out there to to run for office. Is, well, that, ooh, is that true? Definitely not. Chris Wade told me today it's full of libs, and I hate it. That's what he said. Who said that? Chris, <laughs> Chris Wade. Chris Wade. Yeah, I was like, uh, oh, somebody asked him at the media day, what's it like, kind of hanging around Washington D.C. He's like, I hate it. It's full of libs. Get me out of here. <laughs> you know, they're not the only ones there, brother. They're not the only ones there. It cracked oh, me up a little funny. bit. But no, it is funny. It, believe it or not, man, which is crazy. He's in a weird. He's in a weird mindset. I mean, we'll get more into it too. But like, uh, I don't know how he was when he got into your room, but when he was over on the uh, on the virtual media day that I was paying attention to, I wouldn't say that he was in sort of like ho hum. You know, he definitely wasn't as sort of low energy as Ray Cooper the third was, but he was definitely <laughs> sort of in just like a I'm over this sort of thing. And I don't know if that was partially because it's the Washington and all the libs everywhere, or if it's just a matter of like, here it is again, another Bubba Jenkins fight week and another, the same BS talk that happens. But he seemed like he was in a weird source. I'm not sure if it got better when he went over to you guys or did he, did they go to you first or no, did they come so, to us first? So they started with you guys in the virtual media and then they came to us. And so I, it's funny, you haven't seen the interviews and I haven't seen the virtual media interviews. And a lot of times you would assume they would be kind of similar because similar type questions get asked, but we will get into Chris Wade. He actually, uh, he actually got very, very emotional. He actually announced this would be the last time he's fighting at 145 pounds. He actually yeah. said, you know, yeah. that he asked for this fight to be at 155, assuming that, hey, you know, me and Bubba both cut a lot. We both had trouble making weight. Why don't we just do it at 55 and, you know, make it easier on everybody, especially around the holidays, let us get money, get ourselves paid. Uh, and, and said the only reason he was willing to take 45 is just because he wants to fight Bubba Jenkins so much. But he's like, I'm done with it outside of that. My friends, my family, uh, they don't want me cutting this weight anymore. And um, he, he, was actually, he was actually pretty emotional, man. It was, like you said, a little bit flat. But then, I mean, it felt like he was kind of – and you always – I mean, it's the weight cut. There's no question about it. It's a difficult weight cut. Yeah. But he was kind of like battling back. You know, you could hear him kind of choking on his words a little bit, you know, battling back the emotion. So, um, Well, that's good. Well, that's more than – maybe he carried that from our the, – the virtual media room into that because he certainly didn't have that energy. He did bring up the fact about how his family sort of had like an intervention, if you will, and was like, you know, we don't want you to do this anymore. And he kept leaning on that like – you know that was the reasoning beside for him to move uh, divisions. Um, I would think losses would do that too. But yes. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. But yeah, I, I would I would think that probably that weight cut definitely got him in there too because he wasn't as like he didn't really come off as overly emotional when he was in the other room. But maybe the fact of there's also something too when you're staring at a screen like here we are staring at each other on a screen. It's one thing, and then having actual reporters in the room six feet in front of you asking questions that draws out a different sort of feeling, a different emotion and having the time of thinking about it after he got done doing it in the media room, you know, is there something better I could have said in that moment? And then you guys gave him that chance to do it. And maybe he was able to elaborate it more, but um, yeah, he certainly sort of, I mean, ooh, the, the finality of when he was talking in the, the media day, it certainly, it almost felt like it was even outside of just the division, you know. You know, he's a guy that's very talented, has a lot of skill. But I was like, man, he sort of sounds like a guy that his family maybe said not just like, hey, we don't want to see you do this weight cut. Maybe do we want to see you do this anymore? Yeah. I was kind of getting those sort of vibes from him. And I'm wondering if that's partially some of the emotion that maybe eked out a little bit when he was talking to you guys. I think it is. No, I think you're, I think you're spot on because he kind of said that, you know, um, he definitely wouldn't do 45 again and that he'd like to do 55, but he kind of intimated that it was really the PFL that told him they didn't want him at 55 and that they wanted him at 45. And so, you know, I kind of asked him, and I think the way we got into this was I asked him, hey, you know, certainly we've got a lot to talk about with this, but with the news finally coming out, all this new, you know, we've wondered forever, you know, what's going on with this PFL Bellator thing, and now we're starting to get some details, and it's all official, and everybody can talk about it openly, still a little bit hypothetically, I guess, 
because people don't really know where they're going to fall and what's going to happen. But I said, does this change kind of your outlook on things? Like maybe there's other things for you to do other than just go get back into a tournament again, a season again. And that's when he was like, yeah. And I get, and he did kind of say, I guess, it, you know, I'm, I'm leaving it up to PFL, I guess. You know, I don't even know if they want me at 55, but I, I'm, I'm definitely not doing 45 anymore. Um, so, yeah, he and he, he openly said, too, he's like, I know my career is winding down because I was like, you know, do you hope this is the last time you face Bubba Jenkins, or do you think maybe you guys just, you know, keep this thing going for the rest of your career? And he's like, rest of my career, like, uh, you know, he kind of made it sound like maybe, maybe this is the rest. Of so yeah, there was a lot going yeah. on with Chris Wade, man. Yeah, and it's interesting, like when you kind of hear the banter that was going back between the two of them, like living in each other's heads, you know, and Bubbles over on our side saying sort of like he's, you know, gonna. He's evicting him. He's evicting him from the division, you know, even though Chris has kind of said, like, hey, I am I was planning on leaving anyways, you know. So, like, I love the verbiage, you know, you typically tell about how somebody's living in somebody's head. It was kind of funny. He was like, well, I'm evicting this dude. You know, he's blah, 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 all this other little stuff. But, you know, when you think about the fact that the now Bellator and all these people are coming in, the, the, the pool of fighters to jump into these limited seats for these tournaments is going to change. So unless they change the tournament format to enable more players to get into sort of the preseason that eventually leads to like the tournament spots or, or something along those lines, guys that maybe were that closer shoe in to possibly get into the tournament are not going to get those calls anymore, mm -hmm. quite possibly. Or there might have to be some one-offs to even put you into – the contention to get into the tournament play. I mean, I think there's going to be a whole different ways that they can sort of play around with the, the season format a little bit to maybe change it up a little bit. Um, I mean, if, if he's saying that one-off fights and maybe one-off fights at 155 or 45 that maybe aren't part of the tournament format, keep them good. But it's like, if he's saying no, 45 is not the thing. And PFL's like 55 is not your thing. Maybe 55 is not your thing when it comes to the tournament. Maybe it's because they want to have the save the tournament spots for other guys, but we'll give him one-off fights that aren't part of the playoffs yep. and aren't part of the the preliminary season. You know, so maybe there is that. Um, he's he's so he's too good of a fighter, and he's still quality enough that um, he's worth keeping around. I you agree. know, he's a guy you know what you're going to get from him. Yep. It's not like he's going out there and just you know hugging a guy or just giving you boring fights, and you're like, oh man, I really don't want to see it. Like I enjoy watching Chris Wade fights. Um, and it sucks that if he kind of feels that there's not a place for him in the current format, hopefully with the new addition of, of fighters where they're going to be able to maybe play around a little bit more. And if they can't open up more spots for the playoffs, maybe we will see more of these, you know, non tournament, you know, sort of fights where guys can get the action. Cause I would hate to see a guy of his, his stature and his, uh, quality get let go just for the fact that we've kind of seen past recency of how he's performing in these tournaments and whatnot because he is a great fighter um it's just you know he's running into guys that are just beating him you know and it, it's tough but you know with the whole new crop of fighters coming in there's a lot of more opportunities but um that being said there's so it's so many cool fighters that are coming over and i think all these particular crazy matchups you know they want to talk about the bellator international series you know there's a lot of international bellator fighters that leaves a lot of domestic bellator fighters that want to get into this whole pfl tournament and all this other stuff the matchups um potential is just absolutely crazy it's crazy it's and it's cool that now we can sort of start to play around with it you know you can take the time to start diving into these these rosters and think about these cool matchups that can happen that before we were like oh man until we know for sure you know it's like ah you don't really even think about it but it's it's here it's happening now i mean it's crazy i love it i love it it's it's so interesting right because we've we've um you know we've been talking about it for months right about the possibility and and, and what could happen and what it might look like but as you said now that it's here and we can really get official and we can talk about it i still kind of stand in in the same position which is I think it's a positive. It, it, when I look at it from from starting on, right, these two companies coming together, knowing that PFL didn't have to spend any money out of pocket, which is something you and I had talked about. We had heard it was going to be a complete stock deal. It ended up being a complete stock deal. So knowing that they didn't have to spend any of their cash reserves to make this happen, knowing that they now have these two combined rosters together, it seems like it's a good thing. It's got the raw materials to be something good, right? But... I still feel like it's all going to boil down to how they actually execute it, right? Because 
it's going to be a little confusing at first, you know. And, and again, I think a lot of the things we were hearing ended up being true, right? Beltor isn't going away right away. It's going to continue to be operated, um, but let's be honest, it's it's going to continue to be operated because it kind of has to be, basically. It's just, yeah. you know, it, I don't think that's the long-term plan, because I've heard a lot of people go, Yeah, well, there's no guarantee of long-term shit. Make, right. We know we got a year. We know we got a year. We got <laughs> Exactly. Because, it, it, look, it just never makes sense. I mean, the UFC ran WEC for a while. The UFC ran Strike yeah. Force for a while. But eventually you get to a position where you're like, why am I trying to promote two brands simultaneously, create brand awareness simultaneously, create – uh, you know, just in, in getting people to understand that they're the same brand. Like, remember in the WEC, it was like, well, it's basically just like the UFC. They're just not. They're just different weight classes. But it was never looked at yeah. that way, right? So th- there is no long-term future in operating Bellator. So just get that out of the way now. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen for as long as it needs to. It's not going to happen forever. Um, so I think this is kind of a transitionary phrase, or a uh, transitionary phase, I should say, not phrase. Um, but I, I still don't know what because. At the end of the day, you know, I think it's amazing that Bellator's roster is coming together with the PFL's roster because, as you just said, the matchups that we can put together, all the different fights that we can create now are amazing. But we still have to be honest that none of the people on either one of those rosters are as high profile as the UFC simply because the UFC is the leader in the brand. So they're great fighters. We know that. I'm not insulting who they are. We all know on any given night – Anybody in these other leagues can beat people from the UFC. Just because you're in the UFC does not make you a better fighter than anybody in the PFL or or in the or in Bellator. But if we're talking about marketability and we're talking about ratings and we're talking about getting people to tune in, I don't think these coming to, these two companies coming together completely eliminates those challenges for them. Yeah, it's funny. I don't know if you saw the 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 tweet or how Matt Brown put it out there. Um, I forget mm. the exacto, but the jest in my head was it's like it doesn't matter if you're for these other ones. Like when you go to a store and you run into some people and you might be the greatest Bellator fighter, might be the greatest PFL fighter, but people start talking about it, people recognize the name brand of UFC, whether it's kind of like Clorox or it's kind of like Pepsi. Yeah. He said it sort of established itself you know, said, out there, so people they, understand. They say you're an ultimate fighter. They don't say you're a mixed martial artist, right? Yeah. They say you're an ultimate fighter, and he's <laughs> and he's right. That's it. He's right. Yeah. He's a hundred percent right, you know. But I mean, I think it, I mean, as much as I've heard people that are like, "Oh no, see, this just proves that the UFC is a, a, a monopoly," you know. On the on the, I don't really see it as bad as like that. I mean, I see it now. I see the potential of having a really, really clear cut number two strong competitor that can then go about and do deals that maybe the UFC can't deal because of the the fact of its parent company with Endeavor and WME and IMG over top of it, even though they formed this new TKO. There's no, there's nothing that says that PFL and all them can't just go over to the Saudis and the people that are throwing this crazy money and just say, Hey, how much money do you guys really want to throw into this thing to imagine if the UFC, I mean, a lot of times when we know we talked about this the other day, when we talked about how sometimes they get deals with venues because they book in advance. Right. All right. What's to say if you have an a, a, a checkbook that has no limits on it that you can't therefore going forward years in advance bid out the UFC on all these venues that they would normally use for their events. And if the UFC can't go to your town, if it can't go to Madison Square Garden in December, if it can't go to Madison Square Garden in January or wherever because it's been booked out by this other organization, that that you might be the UFC, but if you're only doing events at the Apex, how 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 happy your fans going to be, you know? Yeah. I mean, like it could literally become a venue bidding war if there is one side has an, a, a checkbook that has no ends to it, you know? So it's really, really interesting to think about the the fact of when people, you know, doubt that anybody can really sort of run at the UFC. I mean, there is the potential for them to make a run at the UFC and yep. at the forefront of the market. Granted, they're starting way from behind. I mean, like, just like we said, you're either an ultimate fighter or you're a mixed martial artist, yep. you know? But if people have the recency bias of what they're seeing on TV, what they're, what advertising they're seeing. The UFC has built up a lot of, you know, um, name in that space. But if you're only seeing, if you're starting to only see like PFL commercials everywhere, if the venue in town is always PFL events, people start remembering that. And at some point people might start wondering, you know, what, what happened to the UFC? Is the PFL better now? Cause they're always playing at this event. You know, they're always playing here, you know, and then 
maybe there could be a little bit of public sway and they start taking back some of that space. So if people think that the UFC has clearly lost one of its competitors, I do. I'm, I lean more on the side that they now have a stronger, more unified competitor against them. That's on more even playing field than either one of those two used to stand on their own. Because while both of them were getting broadcast deals and were getting their own thing, now you have a combined force with unlimited potential of people that could be investing into it and pushing money into it um, with, you know, no kick gloves. They're like, come on, come on, come on. I mean, fucking Dude Wipes is back in the game. Dude Wipes is back in the game. They had, <laughs> like, bro, it was it was funny, man. We walked into the media room this day and, and this morning as they were setting the media room up, and they were, they were right there on the table. There were four packs of the Dude table? Wipes. Yeah, I was like, oh. I was like, what is that, just in case some dudes need to be wiped today? Like, why do we have Dude <laughs> <laughs> you know, the room might get hot and sweaty all of a sudden. You're getting that swamp butt while you're just sitting there waiting to do interviews. And you're like, hold on, guys. I'm going to go clean myself up real quick. I'll be back. Look, I, Thankfully, there are some dude wipes in the room. Oh, my gosh. Thankfully. Uh, you know, what's funny is uh, I, I think you're spot on. Man. I think everything you said there is spot on about, um, you know, how this unified competitor becomes a stronger competitor and becomes a more appealing competitor to advertisers, you know, become all, all those things. Everything says right. There is a risk that this is a bit of a, at least for now, a negative for fighters. It does take one potential bidder out of, out of the race for free agents. Right, That's you know true. what I mean. Now you used to be able to say, "Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna exercise my free agency with the UFC and Bellator. What do you got to offer? PFL. What do you got to offer? And and, and listen, we used to say one championship, one championship signed up some some big free agents, but one championship now. I mean, statistically speaking, and, and don't get me wrong, I still love the one championship product because I think the kickboxing, the Muay Thai, the submission grappling, I love it. But in terms of them being real bidders for MMA fighters. I don't know that they are big time bidders for MMA fighters anymore. So, with that being said, yeah. man, in terms of big time MMA, if you're talking about the highest level, you might really be down to two bidders for the elite fighters now, and yeah. that that might that's be true. a drawback. That, yeah, that's true. When you put it that way, uh, I wasn't really thinking about that, but you're right. I mean, it does take a whole a whole option off, and it's weird with the whole. I'm I'm not very well versed in the whole situation, but uh, you know, with one people are sort of cracking down on their financials recently, talking about how their revenues, you know, are nowhere near what they've been saying, all this other kind of stuff. So that kind of is disheartening to hear as well, you know, because I like yourself, like the one product. Mm -hmm. I like the variety that they put in their shows. But again, you know, if they're putting on an event, they're only having two MMA fights. As an MMA fighter, is that really a target for for your for your you know, where you want to get signed, you know, and so. not really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe if you're, you know, a, a grappler or a Muay Thai practitioner, you're like, hell yeah, that's going to let me get on the big stage. But as for an MMA, you might yeah. go event and after event after event without getting signed to, mm -hmm. to fight. Oh, so yeah, I mean that's maybe not the best uh, avenue. If you're if you're a grappler or or a striker only, like that's your place to be right now. Like they're the ones putting out the yeah. biggest. So now again, you, as you said, I've seen the same reports you have about where their potential you know income lies, and so who knows if that's still the future. But for now, it still is. So, um, like I said, it remains to be seen. I, I will say this too, though. I you know I've said it from the beginning, so I'm not, this is not saying anything new. Um, the the PFL's plan to regionalize their product across the world to give people prime time events in their backyard, I think is brilliant. It's been a huge undertaking from the spark. I mean, you think about it. The, you know, the, the the Middle East Northern Africa League is supposed to be you know getting going here early 2024. Um, you know, this champ versus champ event should be a hell of a lot of fun, and and I'm sure that'll probably take place on a uh, a pay per view event in Saudi Arabia. If I'm just you know, reading the tea leaves, so to speak. I'd imagine that's where they'd go with that, take it to their big investors over there and do a pay-per-view event. Um, but but their ability to regionalize this product and get these leagues off the ground, like they got PFL Europe going and getting on, if they can continue to deliver on that, and this just helps them on that front, right? Because now they've got all these roster people. They don't have to go sign one person at a time. They've got, they you know, they just signed all these people at once. It really accelerates their ability to be able to provide quality matchups around the globe. And so from that perspective, it just leans back into what you said from them, from the terms of them being a better competitor. Now, still, you know, still not anywhere scratching even close to where the UFC is in terms of market share, profitability, or any of those things. Like, yeah. they're not even close. It's not even the same ballpark yet. But 
Well, especially if you're trying to do 50-50 shares or how, however uh, Don Davis is trying to say on the big the big events, if you're willing to uh, break even, that's probably not probably not the, uh, the best way if you're going to try to build up money behind your brand. But uh, it certainly goes a long way in building um, support for fighters believing in what you're you're trying to do for them. But yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, yeah, building up profitability, that might not be the best. But I'm not saying like, hey, everybody needs to kind of stiff fighters, you know, with that percentage like the UFC is. But um, you know, I do feel with more stuff like more companies being willing to make the the share closer. And I think you had a good way of when you were explaining it, the difference of like the market share of like the players' unions to the overall teams, as opposed to um, what the UFC share is, where the UFC is kind of like the overall NFL as opposed to the each individual teams um, like the share breakdown is different. That's so sort of confusing when people sort of combine, uh, compare it those is, two. Yeah, it's, it's not, much it's not apples people to apples. that are, are able to, yeah, there's much better people that can explain that than, than me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's funny. Cause I just looked up quickly about the Africa, you know, if they're doing stuff in local, it's a 12 hour difference to Africa from yeah. Pacific time right now. So if you're talking about a, a fight that's at 4 PM, is old cold coffee going to wake up at 4 AM to watch that fight? Probably not, nope. but it's at least, it's not one of those crazy weird times where it's like say 13 or something where it's almost like like 12 hours is doable from here because if things start to fight a fort that might be the prelims the main event's going to be 7 that's 7 you know that's 7 a.m. here i could do that 7 a.m. is doable uh 4 a.m. maybe maybe not no, so much not anymore but, not anymore um well, it's funny you brought up the the different other things. Uh, so I, I I know I I was teasing it earlier, and you said you're not going to be here for the UFC Shang Pi card that's Shang coming up P. here. Shang Pi, look at you, bro. You're just like a wordsmith, bro. You got the F1 puns going. Now you got the Shang Pi. Did you see that? You saw the little picture I put I I put on our little channel, right? I did. I, I, put, I didn't I pay it to me. I didn't pay attention that you had it. Close, you didn't pay you attention it, to it. That you had it cut. Yeah, like if you that. go back. At, if you go back and look at it, I put like put a little X over the Shanghai part. Oh I put my an X, and gosh! I even put, I put the I even put the sphere off in the, on the background. Oh my gosh! I did not see that. Look at dude, you got <laughs> you're a Photoshop master now. You got the. Yeah, I, know. I was you, thinking about I was thinking about tweeting that out or putting that on Instagram. Bro, that's but actually, I was, then I was thinking like I was like, should I put it over the H as well? I only just did the A and the I, and it kind of looks funny. And I started doubting. I was like, I'll just leave it alone. I was like, bro, if you start thinking about it too hard, then. Then the joke is not funny anymore. Then it just feels like work. But I was like, yeah, I'll tweet it out later on because I was messing with it. I saw them when they put that out. I was like, because they didn't put that out that long ago. No. Like, that just came out, like, last week or whatever. And then now it's like, oh, yeah, now it's now it's the PI. So I was mean, like, oh, yeah, UFC Shing PI. I think you should definitely tweet this out. It's the, it's like the worst Dude. Photoshop ever, but that makes it funny. You know what I mean? Like, you right? got to I didn't, I didn't try to add anything else of Vegas in there except for the sphere. No, it's just the Shanghai <laughs> skyline with the sphere. And not just any version of the sphere, but the F1 sphere. The, and then, and then <laughs> that was for you, Mark Fellows. And then, as you, and then as you said, you've got PI over the AI. And so it's just, and so it is kind of like, Shang Fi or Shang Pi, but it's. it's <laughs> I funny. know. I was like, uh, that's it's funny. I should have did better. And I was like, I was like, just stop, Kenny. It was like it was a joke, and then I was like, the more I'd go back, and I was like, then I'm like, did I spend an hour on this stupid meme? I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. All right. So anyway, so you were looking at the hours that it's kind of. It's, they didn't go all the way China hours, right? They kind of changed it up a little bit. No, they kind of changed it up a little bit. I'd have to go and let's see. Uh, let's see. Let me see what time it is in China right now. Uh, <laughs> China is 6 a.m. So if it was at what was the one? Um, let me get that again. I know people like to when we do this on the so main card seven is 10 p.m. Eastern. So that's seven um, seven p.m. So if it is 6 a.m. now, five hours from now will be 11 a.m. there for their main for their uh, main card. It's still early there. It's just still early morning. Um, so that starts roughly at 8 a.m. for them, if my times are right. Things so, change a little uh, bit. Things change a little bit from what they were planning. Yeah. Localized, sort of. Not quite. <laughs> I didn't ever hear. Did anybody ever hear what I've been super busy. Did they ever explain what happened? I have no clue. I'm sure I it was not a, heard. I'm sure it was I've a, not heard a thing. It has to be something with a fighter or something. But I don't know if the cards changed or uh, I just assumed it was 
I don't know. Like, did the did the did China get mad at us for some reason? We're just like, <laughs> well, you'll see. I don't want you sir, to come over right now, sir. That could be a, com- a completely different show that we could talk about for a long time. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, they they I mean, like, they're not one. They they get it when it comes to sports and business. Like, I could see where you know, and plus, you know. Um, Dana tends and the UFC tends to lie on the opposite side of our government in, you know, in charge right now, the guys in the White House. So I would think that they wouldn't hold it against them. But I was trying to think, I was like, what possibly could stop it unless there was, I know they tend to have, like, you know, when there's like, when COVID and other stuff, they sort of do crazy lockdowns and they do other strict sort of things. It could be something health issue wise or something where they're just like, we can't have a sporting event right now. Um, stand down, you know, um, or something. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, for them to be full sale, you know, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and then to now not have it, um, it seems like a really, really crazy uh, about turn. And I have no idea what could have caused that. I'm assuming it has some, no kind, idea. Some, some kind of local partner or something like that that backed up. Something. Like, so you I was never thinking know either the, broadcast, the- broadcast, or government, or something with the venue. But you yeah, never know with the politics something. and stuff that are involved there. That's why it's always weird when you have those like kind of weird international things. Like you know when we did the event yeah. in Moscow and Russia. I mean those things can change on the time. Say, they change big, their big mind ones also. like that. Where yeah, yeah, big ones like that. Like I like I don't you know going over to London. I mean like you know I don't really see the 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 landscape changing so much that no. they would have to cancel that sort of thing. But in something like a Russia or China, you never know. You never know. Um, and you hate to think it's like anything political, but I mean that's the world we live in. Um, there's 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 wars going on. There's shit going on. You know, like things are weird right now. That uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about oh, why can't my entertainment? Why can't my fight happen? It's like oh, hey, remember right now our countries are kind of mad at each other. Kind of got some know? bigger stories so, going on, and maybe kind of got some bigger things going on. Yeah, so. Who knows? Um, I wasn't planning on going to that event, but now I'm going to the event. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I will. I will not be there. So, so I accepted a job, and I guess it's okay that I announced this. All my travel and stuff's booked. They haven't made an announcement. I don't even know if they'll make a formal announcement. It's not a big deal. I'm just filling in. But uh, I'm going to commentate in Brave down in Brazil. So I'm making my 30th trip Whoa. to Brazil. Yeah, they reached out. Uh, Brave is doing uh, back-to-back shows in Bahrain, their their home territory, but. Uh, in between, there's a show in Brazil, um, and because of that, they can't get their b- normal broadcast team from Bahrain to Brazil and back to Bahrain in time, so they needed somebody to fill in, and they actually reached out and asked if I'd be willing to do it, and that was going to be the week of a show in China, so I said, yes, I will go do that. Um, I like Brazil. I haven't been in several years. It's uh, trip number 30, which means I'm not trip number 20. You know, I'd, I'd gone 29 straight times, and now this is trip number 30, so I'm going to commentate in Fortaleza, Brazil. I believe it's okay that I announced that, but uh, so I will not be at that one. So that one is all, the Shang Pi show is all to you, sir. Yeah, fun, fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait to uh, get that first question. Or no, maybe, maybe me and Kaplan. I'll let, I'll let Kaplan have it. You know, kind of alternate through the- a lot of it too. <laughs> oh boy, those those <laughs> post fight interviews where everything's translated is just so much fun. Those are exciting. So much those fun. Are- those oh, are fun. You, get, you really get real emotion when it goes through like three translators. That's when it really starts to get exciting. Oh my god! Just from language to it's, language, and it's and it's weird. I mean, as much as we, you know, I like it's just the subtleties of like one. I mean, like fight nights is crazy. We've talked about this before. A lot of times you're so busy you can't really pay attention to too much of the fights because you're doing a previous interview and other stuff, and then you add in a longer interview because it's going through a translation, but you're also missing the subtleties of what a fighter says because we don't understand fully what the fighter's saying to really get it. Exactly. We're at the we're at the we're at the, you know, the the mercy of what the translator relates to us. And a lot of the times, you know, and especially there we've said i I know we've had some good translators that have done some foreign guys. You know, we I know one of the um I don't know what her name is. What the the Japanese translator that sometimes comes to the Apex is really, really good. Mizu Tama? We don't have her a lot of times. No, no, she because uh, I think she's one that's over in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, she doesn't um, come to the Apex much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I know this what you're is, talking this about. This is another yeah. one that's like a friend of like a friend of like the PR staff or something yep. like that, and helps out and does stuff like that. So we're at the mercy a lot of times of the teams, and these are not like professional translators. They just happen to be able to speak English, and it's just like, well, shit, we're never going to get what we really need to get out of it unless the, they're, this person's really well versed at it. 
So it just makes the night even longer. And half the time you just feel like we're not, are we getting anything from some of these things? Because I feel like we're not getting the proper stuff from the fighter. And then when you don't get that, it's like, it's hard to really have a good emotional follow-up because you're like, you're getting this stagnant sort of answer from a translator. And it just makes the night drag on because you're just like, what are we doing here? <laughs> oh, and look, it, 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 so some people may be listening to this and be like, well, that sounds like you're really whining a little bit. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you a good point. Like right now, uh, no question about it, like uh, Fabiano gets a lot of love for his Portuguese and his Spanish, by the yeah. way, and right and deservedly so, right? I mean, he does a great job at it. But, you know, when we before we had Fabiano, we had Derek Lee. We've had a couple over the years been good, but I'll tell you a guy yep, who Derek, doesn't. Derek, Richard. Yep, Richard as well. Absolutely, man. He was phenomenal as well. Um, but I'll tell you who doesn't get love that, that needs to get love as a translator for the UFC who has helped us a lot is Sergey, the Russian translator, because hundred percent for years. I was hoping you would say him. I was thinking you were going to say him. Yeah. He's really good, man. For years. Right. Cause I mean the Russians and and that whole kind of Eastern block, you know, you think of them as kind of stoic to begin with or whatever, but like the, the language, it was always, as you said, it was like just a coach or a training partner that kind of speaks some English or whatever. And it's like, I felt like our interviews were terrible or under understanding of those people are terrible it's not really our fault it's not really their fault it's just bro when there's real language barriers like that like i there none of the subtleties none of the fun stuff where you get the little details and you can build off of it but sergey man i know all the love goes to fabiano and deservedly so he's great at what he does but i feel like sergey has, has had a huge impact on some of those russian fighters kind of getting um, getting known a little bit more, you know, getting on, I mean, you know, yep. uh, Magomed Ankalaev, now he's up there, like, I always kind of knew, like, he'd be up there, like, smiling, but it wouldn't, but nothing would make sense as to why he was smiling and stuff, and now, I don't know, you get those subtleties, so, I just wanted to give him a shout out, but, uh, yeah, no, and it, and it's true, because a lot of times, I mean, those, a lot of those times, those interviews, since we have good, uh, translation, we're able to kind of go a little bit further into them, and then we get great response from those markets, you yep. know, holy hell, like, we put up, uh, and this is not particularly his guys, but just speaking of that, last week we had uh, Jekka Sarage. I'm sure I blasted exactly. his That's name. Spot on, perfect. Um, <laughs> he crushed it in the in the, he crushed. He had the most views out of anybody really? out of the last event. Yes, and then the uh, number two guy. Oh God, I'm gonna fucking butcher his name. Matiak. Uh, I can't remember what his last name was. Um, the Gosh, where was he from? Um, but the other foreign guy, Mat- Matiak, uh, shit. Come He's on, from Kazakhstan, right? right? He stepped in on short notice from yeah. Kazakhstan? Like, he crushed it. He was the number two. He had, like... Like oh, oh, you know what? I think that no, he's not. He's not Kazakhstan. He's Kyrgyzstan. I think he's Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. Yep, Kyrgyzstan. One of the stands. You know, don't stand on a guy. You know, I just love him. Was he from no, Brian Stan? He was Brian Stan. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the greatest fighter ever. Have just that's that that should be a, that should be in DC. There should be a Brian Stan in DC, like a district of DC. It should be a Brian <laughs> Stan. Um, but yeah, so it's I mean like little things like that. Both those were translated. But had the most views of the last event, which is absolutely mind boggling. Wow. But having good translation, just to go back to Sergey and a lot of these Russians, as they're making a bigger presence, like the Russian uh, fans want to partake and they want to eat this stuff up. So when we're able to give them some of these things, it's amazing. But for us, if you don't, if you have a teammate translating it, it never gives us the right stuff. And then we're just like, Ugh, it just leaves a real sort of ho-hum. So, yeah, it does sound like I'm kind of whining a little bit. But it's just it's it's just weird. Like, because when you're used to – people already shit on the interviews half the time anyways. But then when you can't – when you're not getting good stuff to sort of follow up and say anything, it's just like, okay, let's let's just end this thing. Let's, let's just save <laughs> the translator. Because half the time, even the translator afterwards, they're just like, I'm so sorry. I know. I hope that was okay. And it was like, bro, it's fine. We were just glad to get through it. You oh, know, that's like, true. Thank you for doing. Thank you for doing what you did. You know, like I get it. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people know that. But you're that's right. on the UFC. That's on the UFC. The UFC doesn't get a lot of times. Like if Sergey's there, you know, but it's not like they a lot of times have translators for all these different fighters. They just ask a fighter if he has somebody in his team that can fill in. You know, because most of the fighters bring somebody to help out with the paperwork and all the other kind of stuff. And the UFC half the times like. No, so do you got somebody that can that can translate? And they're like, "Well, I have my my corner, and he's okay." And they're like, "Bet, <laughs> sit here, sit him down, <laughs> let's do this." He's and I was like, "Bro, yeah, you, you're uh, how many how many billions? How many billions are you worth? And you can't you can't have uh, 
you know, if you're going to bring him to media day, bring him a translator that can actually translate it. You know, it's so. funny. You know, it's it's funny you say that. It's, and now it, it, people will be surprised how many translators we've had over the years. Like I said, basically apologize afterwards, or like they're so they're so like really legit nervous that they're like, oh my god, this is going to be awful. Yes. You know what I mean? You feel and you you almost feel bad asking them questions because you can see how bad they feel, but. But, uh, and that's when we just try to end it. When yep. you try to save them, you're like, like, yeah, we're done. We're done. I'm not trying to make that's you feel cool. any bad. Yeah, I'm not trying to make you feel any <laughs> But you know what? I'll tell you what, man. It's funny that you say that because I didn't really realize that um, with the last – with you, with your guys' event. But um, it to me, that goes back to speaking as to why I think if the PFL can pull off what they're trying to pull off, which from the beginning sounded ambitious as hell – but if they can swing it, it can be successful, which is have these regionalized leagues and have all those leagues tie into the big league, right, where you can follow your local guy winning in the local area and then making it to the global roster and into the global tournament. And these these countries that don't really have anybody to cheer for, then all of a sudden they have one guy that's their guy, and all of a sudden they do like an insane amount of views because that's their guy. Like they don't have yeah. 500 guys to pick from. They have one guy, and they follow everything one he does. Guy. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, <laughs> Absolutely. It's, pretty- it's so cool, though, seeing – seeing the. the and you want to talk about people like, – when you see the starts of a country rallying behind the sport and they have that person that's literally carrying the flag for their country. I love it. And for the region. It's so cool yep. to see it, you know, especially when you see the joy on their face. But seeing the reactions, half the time that I'm reading – uh, the comments, obviously, it's in their native language, so I have to do the translate thing. But when you see the the pride um, in the comments, which is cool because usually YouTube is just trolls talking <laughs> shit. But when you see the pride in these countries of these people so happy so to cool. see one of their own in the mainstream uh, sport, it's so neat, man. It is so cool to see it. So, yeah, and, you know, and it's funny because Jekka's fight was absolutely just insane. Both their fights are really, yeah, really were. cool. But it's cool to see the fact that when you go back and look, he, we were talking about, you know, Paul Craig and we we're talking about Brandon Allen's performance. And these are guys that are trying to fight for, you know, getting into the top of the division, trying to make another run. You know, one guy's in the top 10 already. They weren't even close to views that these guys got that were making their debut. It's like, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love that's to crazy. see that. I love to see that. Yeah. I love it. Well, you brought up Brendan Allen, man. I want to get your thoughts on him. I talked about a little bit on the and a half episode. Um, obviously, I was. Yeah. I it was, was a hell of a uh, fight, dude. I was. Uh, it was a crazy weekend for me, by the way. Uh, still, cra- I haven't even been home yet. I haven't been home since Thursday. This has been one of the craziest travel weeks of my life. By the way, got to work two events in the production truck, uh, working with the graphics team and with the production team. And I'm just gonna say, I love it. I absolutely love it, man. I, it gave me new. F- I mean, I already had respect for everybody that does, you know, that puts together the broadcast. But I tweeted this out kind of late the other night after I was done, like. I have even more respect for the people that, that work in that truck that pull everything together. Like, it is a dance, bro, of, like, just bringing everything together live and cutting from this camera and getting to that audio and pulling up this graphic and doing everything. And, you know, obviously we're not working on a, a UFC budget, you know what I mean? We're working on a, on a UFC fight pass budget, you know what I mean? So we, we're scaled down a little bit, and so you got people pulling multiple roles and multiple functions. Um but I was actually, dude, I was actually telling my wife, man, like, I love commentary, man. Obviously, you know, one of the big reasons I made the moves that I made to, to walk away from Junkie was because of my passion for commentary and that I want to do more of it. But I do so much of it now that, like, I used to get, like, really nervous and I don't really get nervous anymore. I just enjoy it. But, like, I was nervous, bro. Like, doing, like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That, you know, we're counting. And it's, and it's a different, and it's a different, it's a different, um, I always tell, you know, because people a lot of times, Say in the heat of shit, I get very testy, and I do. But a lot of it comes from what? working in production. No. Yeah, I know, right? I don't, I don't know that? who these people are, but I've heard people say that in the past. <laughs> they say I'm kind of testy. I get kind of angry at times. Leave my cold coffee um, alone. He's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. I, I'm telling you, when I work, used to work in news and used to do some production stuff. I would have directors when things were just going bad that morning yelling. I thought like, oh, my God, this person is going to knife me as soon as it's done. <laughs> but at the very end, they come out to you and they're like, good show, guys. You know, had some spots, man, but we got through it. We held together, man. Great job. Great job. And I'm like, uh, am I fired? They're like, no, dude. They're like, dude, that's just it's just the nature of the beast. That it's yep. so high paced. It's so fast paced. The, the pressure is so immense that people are yelling and people are calling for things and you have to be on your shit. And if you mess up. They yell at you a little bit, but you just got to recover from it really quickly, and then you move forward, and then everybody just gets beyond it. What's bad for me is that I carry that mindset a lot of times when I go forward as I work, 
there might be times in a moment where if I'm if I'm in the weeds cutting video and I'm on fight night and shit's going bad and somebody says something at that time, if I'm at the wrong spot, bro, I'm gonna snap at you. But it doesn't mean that I don't I don't think it will of you or anything. It's just literally give me 30 minutes and it's done and it's squashed. But some people are like, oh, you yelled at me. I'm like, bro, it's not, it's not personal. It's just it's the heat of the moment. And that's what's cool about trucks and in production, shit like that. It's so at that moment. You have to be on, in the moment. You have to be on top of your shit because when you if you're not there and you're not present and you miss your call, you miss your whatever, and you fuck up a shot or if you take the wrong, uh, take the wrong graphic, if you take the wrong image, if you take the... So many other stuff. If you don't bring the audio up, if they don't bring the audio down, if the audio sounds like shit, if there's so many things that can go wrong, it's such a cool dance that until you actually take part of it and see it, it's hard to really appreciate all the moving pieces working together to put on like what you actually see, like on the TV or what you see on a screen. It's just it's mind boggling. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad you got that respect. I mean, because it's. It's it's a whole different world, man. It is it's a it's a whole crazy different world than you know taking the time to even just set up a shoot, do an interview, and like oh thank you very much, and then you take the time, and you go back to your room, and you process the video, and you do the thing, and you can fine tune everything in TV time and in real uh, time. It's it everything moves at the speed it's of amazing. light. You know, I'll you lo- have to have it, to make it happen. In a weird way, like I know you and I both at, at one point in our lives, you know, came through the food service business, but it kind of reminded me the closest yeah, comparison yeah. I can make would be like a slammed kitchen on a Saturday night or whatever, you know, where it's just oh, like yeah. everybody's 100%. doing everybody's doing their thing in their own little areas, but it's all gotta come together right in the middle, you know, to get the, to get everything out and, and like yeah. you said, I might snap at you like, what do you mean you don't have that down right now? What do you mean you need 10 minutes on that? Like, what? You know what I mean? But it's like at the end of the day, you all get together and you go crack open a cold one after and you'd be like, man, that was crazy, right? How did we get through that? So I I got the bug, man. I got the bug. I got the bug. That's cool. Well, that's cool. I mean, well, you know, I figured the last year that you'd be in the running for journalist of the year. Next, you'll be in for uh, commentator or talent of the year. Right. Then after that, I'll be production guy of the year. (laughs) You know, hey, I'm trying end, to, end of an era, end I'm, of an era. I'm trying to be the well, <laughs> I'm trying to be the well-rounded guy. But uh, all right, so I, I, all that, that's cool so, though. That's very unique. I mean, that's cool. That's I, very, very cool. I loved it. I loved it. Please check out the uh, the CFSA Match Day product on uh, USC Fight Pass. I'm not on the air, but know that I was, uh, you know, in the truck helping make it happen. So I think it's a great product, and it's making some ways in the college wrestling world, which is really cool. Um, a sport that um, I always knew of and knew a little about, but I'm like really getting immersed in, and uh, have found a real passion for that too, man. It's a cool sport, man. When you w- when you watch a lot of it, it really is a cool sport, and obviously a phenomenal base uh, for MMA. So I hope we can continue to elevate it, man. Rob Haydack, that's that's the whole mission is just to elevate the sport of college wrestling, and um, you know we've only done four events so far, but I, I think you know we've already set some some pretty cool precedents and done some cool things, but. Um, but so I was talking about Brendan Allen. I watched it. Um, I just watched it on uh, you know from my hotel room, obviously. But um, you know, you were there. You got to speak to him all week. And I know that I know that, and I and I like Brendan Allen a lot, man. And I and I know he kind of always, or at least the last couple of years, anyway. And I, I, I honestly, I kind of like how open he is about it, where he just calls out people on social media and stuff, like. He's just kind of had a chip on his shoulder for a while, right? Like, just felt like yeah. he, he doesn't he doesn't get the respect that he deserves, and that you know he isn't getting the opportunities that he deserves. And we talked about a little bit coming into the fight, and 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 I think you and I both felt like, hey man, you know, I know you feel like you're getting disrespected, but don't overlook this guy in front of you here because you and I are both big Paul Craig fans, man. He's a good dude. He's dangerous, but man, I you know. No offense to Paul Craig, but this was Brendan Allen domination, man. He looked, he blew yeah. me away, man. Brendan Allen looked great, and now I'm, I'm all on board as far as like you got to give this dude like top five or something next, man. He deserves a big, big name next. Yeah, he's certainly gotten more vocal, you know, and, and that's the best thing about you know watching sort of the progression of, you know, this thing where he feel like he wasn't getting fights, he wasn't getting fights, and then he was like, "Fuck it," you know, why, why hold my tongue? I'm just gonna start calling people out, you know, for for not wanting to get part of this. And you know, he he said he said his bits going in. He's like, Paul doesn't want this to be a stand up fight. He he's gonna try to do the ground game. Paul didn't do as much as I thought about trying to immediately, you know, pull that guard like we've seen in the past. You know, like yeah. once you started seeing happen, people are like, "Okay, he's gonna pull the guard." And I was like, "Well, he's not really pulling the guard." And then. When it got down to it, I mean, they knew that they were both going to have great ground skills as well. But man, Allen looks—he looked—he looked spectacular. Um, I felt bad, man. I, 
after seeing, you know, like you said, you know, big fans of, of Paul Craig and just, man, uh, I just want to see good things for that dude. And, uh, uh-huh. you know, if you can't, if you can't clear the hurdle and get into the top 10, I mean, you really start questioning like what's really sort of left, um, I, th- I still think he beats a lot of the cats, but, you know, as we're getting closer to the top, I wonder if he has what it takes to kind of keep rising up that ranks. And I know for him, you know, it, he's getting older. Um, this might have been one of the last shots going to try to do that run. So you kind of wonder what's going to happen to him. I think he's still got a lot of fight into him. I think this is the kind of guy that if he does get released, I think that PFL tour is going to look really, really good for him. <laughs> Um, is that the official name we're going but, with, by the way? Is it PFL yeah, Thor? Yeah, is that PFL Thor, yeah. I, I didn't coin it, but, you know, it sort of rolls off the tongue pretty really, good. really easy. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it was. Uh, I can't take anything away from um, from Alan, man. He he was sharp. He was focused. I thought it was it was cute and it was fun, and I could see where he was partially annoyed. He had his kid with him, and, and she was cute as can be. But, boy, media day, she kept grabbing the mic and stuff, and I think at some one point he's like, okay, I'm over this. This was cute for a moment, <laughs> now it's not. But it was cool seeing uh, his reaction afterwards, you know, grabbing her immediately afterwards and sort of sharing that moment with him. You can see sort of what it meant to him to um, get a big win, a big performance, um, then to have his family, you know, part of his family there. Um, he's got momentum, man. Call your shot. I mean, uh, it's a tough it's a tough matchup for guys in that division. Um, it's not it's not a sexy matchup because he's dangerous. He's at the bottom. You know, he's like, what? I don't know if that moved him up or if he's still sort of hanging he did. at number he got, 10. He, he, or was no, it he got up to number 8, man. But there's still – you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because it still leaves him, like, behind Delite, which I, I don't necessarily have a problem with. Costa is kind of still up there even though he hasn't been active. Yeah. So, I mean, I think – you know That would be a fun matchup. I love it. Him and Costa, him and – Vittori, I mean, just any of those matches up there. That would there. be a good matchup. As that, yeah, that would be a good matchup, too. I mean, with his fight style, I mean, he's got hands, but, man, he's got great ground game where a lot of those cats, like Vittori, I mean, like, I don't think most people are like, okay, there's a he's a, he's a grappling guru, you know, like, yeah, let's get him. And if he gets you down on the ground, he's going to try to just pummel your head off. It'd be interesting to see how he would match up against a guy like Allen. I mean, those are tough matchups for them. You know, as the, the flip side of Craig, where if Craig, you know, feel like if he couldn't get through Allen, he's going to have a hard time on some of those other guys. But Me Allen's too. just sort of unique. He's so, he's so dangerous. Um, he's he's definitely not just a striker, but he's got great hands, man. He's got really good hands. He's got good ground game. Um, and he's motivated. And he's going to Disneyland to celebrate. I, I, I don't know if you saw the post, but I tried teeing it up. Because I feel like we haven't seen that forever. Remember, it used to be back in the sure. day when we were kids. When we were young, everybody's like, well, how are you going to celebrate? I'm going to Disneyland. So he says in the cage, he said he was going to go to Disneyland. So... At the very end, when it's done, I knew his daughter was in the room, so I just tried to toss him up. I was like, "I, hey, I kind of heard what you said in the octagon. I know you have the, how you uh, you want to celebrate. I'm gonna see if I can tee it up like the old commercials." I said, "So how are you gonna celebrate?" And he, I think, his, I forget how, what his daughter's name. I thought he said like, "Hey Bing" or something. He's like, "Hey Bing, where are we going?" And he's like, "We're going to Disneyland." She was just like, "Quiet." I was like, "Well, I'm sure she's excited." <laughs> It totally didn't have the moment, but I was like, I appreciate that he tried to incorporate his kid into it because he could have just been like, "We're I'm going to Disneyland, you know, but he tried to incorporate his, his girl and I was like, good for him. Um, he was really, really embracing. It was kind of, it was very cute to see, you know me, I'm not a big lovey dovey. Oh, kids, kids, kids. But it is cool when they come and they're adorable, you know, especially at that, that, uh, that size, that age, well, that's you know, it. you know, I mean, uh, I, she was I really, really cute. Obviously I can speak as a parent. I mean, I got, I got my wife and kid with me this week here for, for the show and and uh and yeah man you want your kids to have all those experiences right you know what i mean like it's it's weird yeah. when your kids start getting a certain age you realize like you know you and i man man we, we, you and i have traveled the world together right you know what i mean like we have seen a lot of fun places and we've hung out a lot of cool things and now it's like i don't even really want to go to a new place unless i got my family with me you know what i mean unless i can provide yeah. that for my kid like it's it's weird once you have a child how that kind of changes you're no longer interested in like having these new life experiences on your own or even just the highest level of the experiences you already have and like you want them to have that opportunity so i think it's cool that he's sharing that spotlight and you know i don't know if that i, I started wondering i'm like is that gonna be a deal where like everybody brings their kid and at some point does the usc just be like yo dog uh en- enough of that like uh, they're gonna ban flags I mean, I don't and mind ban it. kids i mean as yeah as long as it, it starts to like as long as you could still do business you know i mean as long as if media day became a point where it's like bro we can't even interview because you you can't 
your kids like running around going crazy or you're distracted as long as it's not a distraction to the fighter i don't mind it hasn't got to the point where i don't mind it but um maybe at some point but right now i think it's still pretty cool it's still kind of cute i don't think it happens enough that people are burning out on it yet um you just be like i think it's um, kind of cool did you see that guy that brought his six kids into the room today his like <laughs> is is that and, and, oh sam alvey yeah <laughs> <laughs> Like maybe, maybe <laughs> Sam. Uh, Sam, we we have to draw. Unfortunately, only three kids max per corner. Like you gotta. Yeah, Sam. We have a waiting room where you could you could put all ten of your kids. Or you know, he doesn't have that many kids. You but, yeah, I remember he. Used, I remember there were times where at one point, boy, it, I swear there were little kids, and then there was like stroller, and then there was like somebody holding a baby. I was like, Sam brought the crew oh, out bro. with him, he and used- he's not the older one. Nate Marcourt used to have. I think he yep. had quite a few kids, and he used to bring his kids and. Um, but at that point, I always thought it was kind of cool. I was like, dude, that's awesome. Like, because you know, these fighters have families, and it was just, you know, it's cool that they were able to actually bring them. And like you said, share the moment because I'm sure the wife wants to be there. Yep. And then if you don't have the money to pay for uh, uh, somebody to watch the kids or your family can't, you take the kids with them and you start building those memories. Like you said, um, it's still kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, Maybe that's something that'll happen eventually. I don't envision it. I just think a lo- there's a lot of fighters that don't want to deal with the emotions of having their fighters. I'm sorry, their family there with sure. them. That I don't think that so- everyone will go because you know some people. Um, we've even heard stories. You know, some people's family can't. They they don't do well watching their their sons or their siblings or their lovers step in a cage and, and fight for a living. So maybe there will be that point where they're just like, "Brah, no, thank you for the offer, but I'm gonna stay home." So. You know, uh, maybe we'll never get that point, but it's certainly cool when it does sort of happen. I did wonder: Are you going to guys? Are you going to stick around afterwards and uh, do any sightseeing? We did. So we actually, what we did is we came in a little bit early. So we actually, uh, so we flew in Monday night, and then Tuesday morning we all went to. It's my first time in Washington D.C. Man, I've never been here. I came here when I was like 18 years oh, old. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I came here well, when I was. Then it wouldn't like, be your first time then. I came here when your I was first like, time as an adult. <laughs> what's? Oh yeah, exactly. No. But when yeah, I, came, I was going to say, well, if you came there before, it's not really your first. Well, time. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> but but I haven't really been to the city. So when I came here when I was like 18, but what it was is here's the story that I. Stayed with a buddy in Newport News, Virginia, which I think is like maybe an hour from here or so. Uh, but I went to a soccer game at the old RFK Stadium. It was like the second MLS Cup final ever, I think in like 96, 97, something like that. Um, and, and so I was only in town for literally like the length of the soccer game. And I never got to see like any of the sights or the, the things or whatever. So we came in Monday night and then Tuesday... Um, we went to uh, the Smithsonian. We all went to the Smithsonian together, which was cool, which I didn't really realize until I was here. Like, all that stuff's free, you know what I mean, which is, I think, pretty cool that they just let you in for free and, and you know, kind of go around and see all those artifacts and, you know, to help and teach yep. the kid about American history and all that. And today, while I was at Media Day, they took, like, the bus tour around and saw a bunch of the sites and stuff. And so we're seeing a little bit. They're doing some on their own, and, and, we're, and we're doing some together. And then we are going to leave, like, Saturday evening. I made sure not get, like, the early flight out on Saturday, so maybe we can hang around a little bit Saturday as well. But not, not staying extra, but still, you know, seeing a little bit, and it's cool. Like, I will say I, I don't know how successful Black Friday will be as a whole for the PFL, and this is kind of the day they selected. I do like the idea – of picking Black Friday as the day for the finals versus, like, you know, when they were doing it on December 30th or whatever. I mean, that's bowl season and holiday season and all that. So I do like the Black Friday thing, but I will say from a personal perspective, I like it because last year I got to bring my family to New York for Thanksgiving. This year I'm bringing my family to Washington, D.C. for Thanksgiving. So, um, you know, it's like my kid's out of school for the week, so he doesn't have to take any vacation days. And, you know, I can kind of save up the miles that I have uh all year long from all my other trips and use them on them and so it ends up being not a real expensive trip so um yeah i'm a fan i don't know if it'll make sense for them but uh, make sense for them from financially but for me it it makes sense yeah well hopefully though uh we're speaking back to your family like i don't know if they got a chance to go to like any of the smithsonians the the national air and space museums are really really cool if your kids into that sort of stuff and then they got the national museum of natural history up there but there's some smithsonians up there that are really really cool um, museums that are different than just like people think museum they think of art only like art but this is like really really cool yeah. shit so if they get a chance to see any of that sort of stuff would be very cool but I'm sure they got down to the uh, 
where the big um, Washington of Monument course. and all that other that, kind of stuff down there. That's yeah. uh, you kind of have to see that when you get there. That's my kid's uh, favorite so far. <laughs> he likes the Washington Monument so far out of all the ones he's seen. So he, he likes that. Very one, so. cool. Um, all right, yeah, listen. That's, that's um, cool. we, we want, I mean, we don't necessarily preview. We've talked about all the matchups along the way. We've done some uh, media calls and, and all that, but. Um, I'll just say overall as a whole, uh, like I said, we did a media day today that was really the, the prelim fighters. The weigh-ins are going to be tomorrow. So by the time you hear this, you may have already uh, seen the weigh-ins. There is going to be a press conference right before the ceremonial weigh-ins that will feature um, all 12 of, of the, the finalists. Um, you know, we've had pretty much calls and talks with them along the way. So I don't think there will be a lot of new stuff, but we'll have a couple little last quotes. We'll have some face-offs. Um, any, any of the ones, I mean, are, are you looking for, I, I like this card on paper, man. I really do. There's some interesting storylines. I mean, Olivia Aubin Mercier, he's basically said, look, he's retiring after this win or lose. Like he's like, I'm just done. Uh, I need time to rest and be with my family. Meanwhile, Clay Collard is the guy that's kind of always kind of fallen short and come up short, kind of yeah. feel like the world is against him. And now he's here going for his millions. So that's great. Uh, Dennis Goldsoff and Henan Fajera is just two insanely massive dudes. Uh, that That's can gonna fit. be a fun fight. Oh yeah, that that one should be all over the, the first all the round. tournament fights. Yeah. I mean, all the championship fights I think are great fights. Like they're all they all have something. I mean, the Pacheco fights awesome. The Sadabusi fights gonna be awesome. Yep. Of course, Josh Silvera. You know, we big fans of Conan. Josh is killing it, uh, and I mean, like Impa Kinsagane. How can you not like that guy as well? I mean, those fights, those those five fights right there. Um, that's a badass card, just right yep. there with those five. I mean, like, this is a really, really good card. And then you go down the line, Kayla Harrison, Aspen Lad, fun fight. Boy, Kayla Harrison and Cyborg can happen now. Can you believe right? that shit? All the, no more of the, can like, Can you believe all, that shit? Done. It's, that fight's happening. That fight's happening. Yeah, it's so nuts, dude. Like, that's so cool. And I'm like, ugh, dude, that's so cool. That's so cool. Brunson, we're going to see how Brunson gets to look. I mean, like... Um, we've seen UFC fighters go over there and think that, oh, you know, we're going to run through ship, you know, run through the shit and they don't. And this could be that fight as well. Ray Cooper is a fucking dog, man. Um, and is he the pissed. same Ray Cooper he's that, pissed. you know, from, <laughs> I, he, he has a chip on his shoulder, right? Big time. Um, it's weird. Like that was the thing, like in him in the virtual media day, I was like, what is going on? I was like, he would short answer is just like he was stewing a little bit. Um, I think he feels like I'm the guy they're bringing in to you know to let this UFC fight guy UFC guy come in and make a name for his very first fight you know blah 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 blah. Ray ain't gonna just he's not gonna just lay down. I mean if Derek goes in there and doesn't keep his hands up and keep his chin tucked, he could go to sleep yep. easily in this fight, man. Cooper is a dog. So yeah, I mean that fight is dope. And then they, I mean you get down the line. I mean like there's some crazy good fights. Bubba Jenkins, Chris Wade. We were talking about earlier the heat on that fight. That's like what the third fight. That's on the prelim. So that, well, that's what I was gonna say. So look, yeah, that's the third fight for the night. That is so ridiculous. Even if, this card is sick. It, it really is. I think it's the best card they've ever put together. Again, the fights still have to happen, but in terms of the storylines, in terms of how I think they're gonna play out, it's gonna be fun. Fifty dollars on pay per view. I get it. Some people are gonna say I'm not gonna pay that. I understand if that's your if that's your perspective. I mean, I I, I, I do pay for everything. I don't watch illegal streams. I just feel like we're in the business. I feel like that's a bit of a. a hypocritical to you know what i mean to, to do that so i would pay the 50 dollars, but i get it man I, times are tough for everybody out there this is my sport this is what i watch i would buy it but i understand that people times are tough right now man i totally get it man oh the streets here are tough man it's this it's it's a problem it's it's tough <laughs> it's, but it's true but it's tough but i would say even if you don't have the 50 if you if all you can watch is the espn plus card I think you're going to get some entertainment there, right? Because you will get, you're get one. Some fun. Yeah, yep. you're, you'll get one championship fight there. You'll get Gabriel Braga versus Jesus Pineda, which is a rematch of kind of a, a controversial fight to start it. And by the way, two like kind of young international studs that are going to be very, very exciting. So um, even if you can't afford the fifty, oh, that's sneaky. I didn't even oh, notice that yeah. down there. That that's actually the championship. So they're doing one little championship sneaky, to give you. That's sneaky. like your little. That's like your little feed into the pay per view to try to get you to buy in. You know, to 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 watch it, and and what they did is they took one that on paper where it looks like it should be absolute fireworks. So that'll be good. You got yeah. Biagio Ali Walsh. His it, what looks like is going to be his final amateur fight. Uh, it's, little it better be little it little, little be. known if he, if he fact. This dude, they don't he talk better go pro. <laughs> they don't talk about it much, but actually, uh, the grandson of Muhammad Ali, which I probably most people weren't aware of that fact. Really? So yeah, that came is up. He really? That came up. Today. I wondered about that when I saw the Ali. I was like, <laughs> I was like, could it be? I'm not he's quite actually, sure. And he's actually also <laughs> the grandson of Steve Walsh, which is even lesser known. No, I'm just, <laughs> 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 I'm 
Um, as you said, you got the Bubba Jenkins versus Chris Wade uh, grudge match, which should be phenomenal. You got Kai Wu, who trains Mark Zuckerberg, uh, facing Phil Caracapa, who made his way through the CFFC at one point along the way. Uh, and then Jesse Stern and Josh Blyden start off. So even if you can't pony up the 50, I would say carve out some time to watch that prelim card because I think it's going to be entertaining. So that will be on Friday, November the 24th. Uh, last thing, Cold Coffee, I had to ask you. Like, So I didn't get to see it. I had to watch it from afar. <laughs> uh, but it, you know, So did everybody else. I, I, so did everybody else. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Whether you're here or whether you're on TV, you had to watch it from afar. That's fine. you certainly so, couldn't. Watch it from the streets. So I saw people even clipping pictures. They were in hotels looking off a reflection of a mirror on the wall that so that showed the track. I was like, bro, if you're that desperate, like just buy a damn ticket. Like if you're gonna stand somewhere, unless you just happen to be like, okay, I'm getting a drink, I'm going elsewhere, and I'm just gonna do whatever. But uh, man, it is what it is. Uh, I'm I'm waiting to see this. Uh, you know the numbers come in. Um, you know there's two there's two sides to everything. Everybody keeps talking about the you know the economic impact. I want to see it. You know I'd like to see the studies of the economic impact leading up to it that was affected. And we talked about that a little bit last time with people yeah. not being able to get to the job or things, whatever. You know you might be a net positive from the event itself, but what about the month leading up to it? Yep. Um, as for it, you know it kind of sucked that the guy one was the happened to be the guy that was talking shit about the event and talking <laughs> shit about Vegas. So I was like, fuck you, dude. I get it, but fuck you. Uh, but as for watching it, you know, um, I wish there was more rubbing in there. I the, the, I thought the wreck was pretty cool. Um, you know, it was just a lot of single file driving really fast, expensive cars. It's funny when I, when you think about the juxtaposition of F1, there's Alfa Romeos, Ferraris, Porsches, this, this, this. And then you watch like NASCAR, uh, Chevys, Dodges, you know, like <laughs> Fords, you know, all this other shit. And it's like, that okay. That old 43 damn, Chevrolet, mate. <laughs> yeah, that damn 43 brother. You know, rubbing's racing and you get in there and actually see him. You know, granted, like there's turns and there's like crazy shit that was happening in the F1 whereas at least in like NASCAR I, I, I mean I would be lying if I said half the time you you want those see the the uh the rubbin the, the 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 wrecks the big one you know and all the other kind of shit whereas you know definitely going through the turns it's it was very spectacular to see the scenery of the the cars going through and just the upper vision when you sort of had the look downs um I thought was really cool then it kind of looked like an arcade you know watching it go through the city yeah um I th so I thought it was visually, I thought it was pretty cool. I still blows my mind that people actually paid that kind of money to actually sit there, even if it was severely discounted because they were going so fast that they were literally zooming by your little station where a lot of these people were sitting and that it just felt to me like watching on TV um, was a better was a better play than going down there. 100%. But I guess if you want to pay the money to say that you're there, then there's always going to be that crowd. But um, I will say I was at a party. And we put it on, you know, and it was on the TV. So it was like, you know, it was cool. Everybody was, you know, happy that it was there uh, um, in town doing its little thing. But, um, you know, I'll be happy if, 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 the, if the impact is really what it says. I mean, I know there was talk of some whale at one of the casinos somewhere that tipped – was it four hundred thousand yeah. or something? Yeah, I read that too. Um, and then they spread it out amongst, um, but they didn't spread it out like to everybody. They just spread out to like some dealers in the house got a bunch of it or whatever. So it was just like, you know, I saw someone some, saying somewhere it was like, you know, all you need is thirteen whales to spend a hundred million at a casino, and there's your one point three billion. I was like, okay, yeah, that <laughs> still doesn't benefit the overall area. That benefits that casino, right? Which were the people on the convention authority that were wanted them to come in the first place, you know. Um, I'd be happy to see if, you know, yeah, China, the, the restaurants in Chinatown are like, yeah, we had a great turnout. You know, our, our profits for the week were better than ever. You know, like that's the impact I want to see is the other places. The yeah. only people that are going to see it are the main, the main casinos that were making money anyways. Um, but whatever it was neat. It was neat to see it on TV. I will admit that it was, it was cool to see it. Uh, again, I thought it sucked that the winter was shitting on the town, but the weather was kind of crap. Like it was interesting that night, the wind was really blowing. So you could see that it was affecting it. So I'm not sure if, um, that made the race different than what they normal, but I've seen some races before where they're in rain, you know? So I was like, bro, it's not raining. So like, just take the win and be happy with it. But, um, it was interesting watching boy, when they do their, uh, pit changes, watching them swap out like the front cone and the tires in a matter of like two seconds or whatever is crazy, crazy, crazy. in terms of like, compared to like watching like a NASCAR pit, you know, it's, it's night and day. It's, it's two totally different things. Just two total different beasts. There's one that's purely, much more scientific and just um, 
you could see the money difference. <laughs> you could see yeah. the money difference as yeah, yeah. opposed to like a, a NASCAR or something. But um, yeah, I think in terms of racing, and I'm sure my F1 people shit on me. I'm still I'm still more NASCAR than I'm more F1. Right. But I'm also more PBR than I am uh, a fancy drink, anyway. So that's true. It is what it is. But uh, no, it was cool. It was it was it was neat to watch it on on the the TV. I I, I enjoyed uh, certain the, aspects of it. The, I thought it was pretty crazy. The, it just the, sucked that it was so late. It's not for the U.S. market, nah. even though they were trying to say that the the. Um, you know that it had a great TV share. I mean, there wasn't anything else on at that time. It was late, you know. So it's like if you're going to have a, a broad share of what people are turning into sports at that night, it was the only thing on at that time. Yeah. But it was neat to 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 see it. Some of the camera stuff was pretty spectacular um, view. So yeah, it looked like it was like watching a video game it more did. so than any other F1 that I've ever seen in a location. It looked much more like a high tech. Um, just different world than, yeah. than whatever. So yeah, it was cool. The visuals cool. were cool. Like we said, the, the sphere, obviously the visuals, the sphere was amazing. The throughout. sphere was, the sphere stole the show. Yeah. Like people are, the, the, that little helmet with the track where it made it look like he was watching the cars go by. was yep. so cool, but it's like it blew, it stole the show. It blew people away, you know? So, I mean, it was so unique and what good timing to get that, make sure that that was ready to go for the time that the F1 came. Um, because that's half of what people were talking about was that how the sphere looks. So that was awesome. Um, that was pretty cool. That worked out pretty good. Basically, you know, uh, what it boils down to, I think, for us, you know, you know, long time Las Vegas residents is twofold. Number one, you know, if, if this thing is going to work and can be continued to be set, like just please get the thing set up faster with less inconvenience, man. Like it's just it was months of work. You know what I mean? Not just like a couple of weeks. So like get it set up faster. And as you said. Man, find a way to make at least some tickets affordable. Like some, like some way for people that live in Las Vegas to go check it out and watch it. Because there was just, unless you were willing to drop some serious coin, and even with the prices dropping, they still weren't cheap by any stretch of the imagination. It was hard. Yeah, and supposedly there's a, a class action suit. If who knows if that's just the phrasing that they're using for that second practice session that everybody got booted out. That that's not a great look by any means. You know, you're going to have a practice session at 2 a.m. People wait around and been drinking, and people wait, and then all of a sudden you try to say that oh well you 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 don't you you have to let the security because of the hours go so you can't properly staff the security. So then you have to push everybody out of the venue that paid hundreds upon hundreds and some thousands of dollars to be there. Uh, that's not a good look, and that and then that's look. one of the things that people are really, really pissed off about. Um, I, I saw some of the video of the of the security firms that were hired um, that were you know just yelling at people on the the crosswalks and the the overheads. You know, like that's public area. You know, that's not uh, F one's thing. And the fact that they were you know yelling at people, getting in their face, I'm surprised more people didn't like get physical with these guys. Um, that pissed me off. Seeing that, that pissed me off. Um, and that just made me kind of bitch about them even more. I was like, "Fuck you and your race!" If you if you, people are trying to enjoy the town and you're yelling at them because they they want to stand and maybe peek to see what's happening over on the crosswalk that we paid for, not you. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of pissed me off a little bit. But it is what it is. I mean, hopefully um, the 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 they know what it takes to set it up. Um, you would hope that they take those lessons and the next year will be that much quicker and that much better. Um, we'll see what happens. I think um, we're at least having one more. Um, so we'll see what the sort of real economic impact and see if there's ways that they can, you know, better do it so that uh, other businesses and other things in that area aren't affected as much. So there really isn't as much of a uh, downside for uh, people on the periphery uh, of the event. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Did you, uh, um, did you see the headlines that as a thank you to the people of Las Vegas, we are discounting the merchandise by 40 percent it's like oh it's because so nobody there, bought it yeah so there was a bunch of merchandise that didn't sell and you're not trying to pack it up no, and ship it I somewhere saw else nobody buy anything <laughs> I was, i've seen nobody rep this shit I, I mean even that night it wasn't like i was seeing people <laughs> repping this stuff i i had friends that went down there and nobody bought shit i'm, I'm sure it was like crazy priced or whatever i thought that was ridiculous like bro as a thank yeah. you to the city we have uh memorabilia discounted at 40 percent like bro how <laughs> dumb do you think we are okay we got it just be yeah. like we got this leftover shit do you want it for cheap? You can get it now. Do you want it for cheap? <laughs> Before we drop it off at the thrift store. <laughs> Check out yeah, Salvation just wait, Army. Wait, wait, wait another couple months. That shit will be at the thrift store. <laughs> Too funny. All right, man. Well, listen. Uh, hopefully, everybody uh, has a wonderful Thanksgiving, as you say. You know, just because yes. just because it's a holiday doesn't mean we ever take off, man. 452 consecutive weeks. We haven't stopped yet. We won't ever 
ever for the rest of life. We're just going to keep doing this. So <laughs> hopefully everybody has – We're going to upload ourselves so even after death we can still – AI is going to take over Bro, the, you the could coffee def- AI version. There is definitely I – I was thinking about this the other day because, you know, now they have this like AI where it, uh, you know, mimics your voice, whatever. I was like, there is definitely enough audio of our voices out there that somebody could just oh my gosh. do this forever. It, it, it would just be angry Kenny AI half the time. <laughs> it would just be <laughs> – it's, it's Pam and I'm an Angry easy Kitty. model to copy. It's just an easy model to copy. The AI is like, do you have a harder subject? This guy's pretty easy. <laughs> it's the Pam and Angry Kenny show. Hey. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. Anyway. Oh, All right. Hopefully everybody enjoys your Thanksgiving. Like I said, check out uh, PFL Championship on Friday, November 24th. If you can, if nothing else. At least check out the uh, the free show, and we'll start getting ready for this bold new world of PFL tour and how that's going to affect things moving forward. We'll be covering it for sure. Lots of things will be happening uh, over the next uh, few months, and obviously next few years with PFL. So we'll we'll cover it all. Uh, in the meantime, appreciate everybody. Enjoy the time away, and uh, we'll start the drive to the end of the year when we see you next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>